I did put up a video on one of my frequently asked questions on what you need to start up a studio, what you need as a studio photographer. And I mentioned a lot of things in there, but I really didn't go in depth on what exactly you need to get if it comes to light, or if it comes to cameras, or if it comes to lenses, triggers, and so forth. So in today's video, I'll be looking at explaining in depth on the things I mentioned, the key parts on what exactly you need, because I remember seeing one of the comments in there that I have a Canon 750D and can I use it for a studio photography and if I want to upgrade, what should I change it to? So in today's video, I'll be looking at tackling all these kind of questions, which of course is important to you as someone who wants to start up a studio. That is why I always, all the time, tell you to leave down in the comment section below what you think or what you need answered in probably whatever video I put up. So that's one of my frequently asked questions. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to turn on the bell notification icon. And also don't forget to share this video to your friends who might be interested in learning a thing or two about photography and also want to know exactly what you need to start up as a studio photographer. So let's just get into today's video. When I did start that video, which I'm going to link up here, you can go check it out or I'll leave it down in the description. I did mention light, right? And I showed you my Godox AD600 and the Godox SK400. I mentioned the Godox V860 Mark II. I'm just going to show it to you today because I have it around. Right, this is the Godox V860 Mark II, which is uh, a powerful flash for me. It has 200, um, 2000 mAh at full power when it comes to its full battery life. We'll get into that very soon, but I just really want to explain something to you concerning CRI. Whenever you're shooting with um, these Godox flashes, make sure you are within the ranges of uh, the particular brand you're using. If it is the AD600 or if it is the ADs, make sure you're using the ADs. If it is the SK, you're using the SK. If it is a QS, if it's a DP. Just because when I had, I have, not when I had, I have the SK400 and I also have the AD600. I paired these two flashes or these two mono strokes together. And when I shot the color rendition from the Goddess AD600 was looking way different from that of the SK400 just because I use the SK400 most of the time for rimming my subject, right? So when I checked the colors coming in from the camera, which I'm particular about colors just because I do a lot of color grading, I saw or I realized that the rim was warmer compared to that of the AD600. But when I use the Godox V860 Mark II, I think I had a similar situation when I paired the V860 Mark II to that of the SK400. So when you're buying the ADs, make sure you have the ADs in check. And for me, I bought mine from GoPixel. So GoPixel is an online shop which sells a lot of camera gear stuff here in Ghana. If you're interested in getting your stuff, I'm going to leave down in the description their handle. Just go, you have better offers concerning camera gears. Um, lighting, stands, boards, um, backdrops, anything camera accessible, anything studio accessible, you can get it from GoPixel. I'll leave their handle down in the description. I've also mentioned them in my previous video. So if you really want to get these stuff at affordable prices, go check them out because I got most of my stuff from them. So that being said, I did mention the Godox V60 Mark II and I showed it to you earlier, right? So this has more power, if you ask me compared to all the other speed lights. If you don't have enough fans and you want to go in for speed lights, go in for the Godox V860 Mark II, which has more power, 2000 mAh, more powerful than the normal battery powered. This is a lithium battery. So if I say battery power, I mean the AA batteries. So don't go in for those ones if you want to start up a studio and you're under budget. So you can get, I think, two of these and they'll work well for you. Or you can go in for the new or the new released, let me drop this. They release Godox AD100 Pro or the Godox V1, depending on how much you can afford, just go in for them. But if you have enough funds to afford, I think, to me, I'll probably prefer the Godox AD600. I get mostly asked all the time, why Godox AD600 BM and not the Pro? So quickly, I searched online, right? And I've had a lot of friends have the Godox AD600 Pro. I did a comparison. The Godox AD600 Pro, to me, is all about ergonomics, how it looks and how it makes you look like a pro. Aside that, when it comes to battery capacity, the Godox AD600 BM is more or lasts longer than that of the Godox um, AD600 Pro. When it comes to um, recycling rates, the Godox AD600 Pro has more, is more faster compared to that of the Godox AD600. 
that's if you're shooting at full power but most of the time no one is shooting at full power unless you're trying to overpower the sun and the godox 8600s are more of an outdoor strobe than a studio strobe so if you're looking at if you're looking out for a studio strobe look out for the godox um, AD300, AD200, even the AD100, the AD400s. But for, and I know the AD400 is also an outdoor strobe that's trying to overpower the sun. But if you're not looking at any of these and you want affordable ones, I did mention the Goddard V16 Mark II. You can go in for the um, Goddard SK400s. You can get more of those. The DPs, the KOS, each and every one has their own color rendition they come with. Just look out for the one you can afford, the one that can portray your image well for you and just purchase those. So for me, if I'm to suggest anything for you, I will go in for the Godox AD600 compared to the Pro. The only thing, the only differences are what I mentioned earlier. But because I know the Godox AD600 lasts longer than the Pro, I'm going to go in for the Pro. And I'm not going to, I'm not really trying to impress anyone with how it looks and how ergonomical it comes. It's just, and also it's cost efficient when it comes to the Godox AD600 Pro and the Godox AD600. The Godox AD600 is cheaper compared to the Pro, which no one is trying to buy the most expensive gear just to impress somebody. If you have the funds, like I always say, you can get that. But if you don't, get the Godox AD600 if you can afford it. If not, look out for the V1, the V860 Mark II, and any of the SKs or even the new AD100 Pros, which are quite affordable for you. So yeah, that's about light and I hope I've explained enough. If you have any questions, kindly leave it down in the comment section below concerning anything about the light I just explained and we'll get right into it. Second thing I did mention was cameras, right? I also, in the comment section in my previous video, like I think I said it when I was beginning the video, someone said he had a Canon 750D, can he use it for studio photography? And yes, why not? It's a DSLR, it's a digital SLR. If only you have more lights to shoot with, it comes out, you get your high resolution image. You're not going, I'm not sure you're going to post it on a billboard. I'm not sure you're going to post it, uh, um, print it out very large and put it somewhere. If it's for Instagram, if it's for social media purposes, if, if it's for promoting your brand on any other social media platform, whatever DSLR you have, which is, I think, I think the least um, DSLR with the least megapixel is like the 11 megapixel. But I know all the DSLRs I've used so far, 18 megapixels and above, and no one on Instagram is ready to go look out for that 1800 million megapixels. No one has that time. All they need to know is your image looks perfect, it looks great, and they like it and it appeals to them. So if you have the Canon 750D or any other camera you have, it's good for you. Just use that particular camera. I am a Canon fan, I'm a Canon freak, so most of the time I'm using Canon gears. I started with the T, Canon T, um, C5 and I somewhat tried diverging into the Nikon because someone convinced me to buy Nikon cameras. For me, I really don't like Nikon cameras. Don't come and ask me why I'm not hating on Nikon cameras. They are really good. If you ask me, I think from the Nikon D750 upwards are cameras I would, I would really want to buy if I want to move into Nikon. But aside from that, nope, I'm not buying anything below D750. So. Someone tried convincing me to buy an icon and I ended up buying a 6D and I've used 6D for a long while and I managed to upgrade to the um, Canon 5D Mark IV and I haven't wavered from the Canon 5D Mark IV. There are new cameras that are available which I would wish to buy. If you would support me, you can let me know. But for me, I'm taking my time trying to gather money to get these new cameras. And if I'm to move from these DSLRs, I think I'll be going in for the R6, which is cost efficient for me. But aside from that, if you have, if you're a Fuji fan, you can get the Fuji X-T2, the X-T1, the X-T3, the X-T4. I know a friend who uses the X-T30 and he's really good at using it. And also the X-T1, of course. And if you're a Nikon fan, you can go in for any Nikon camera above the D750. I know the D750 is the cheapest. They normally compare it with the Canon 6D. So go in for the Nikon D750 if you want to start up using Nikon cameras. For Sony, um, I really haven't used Sony a lot. I think I used the A7R Mark III sometime. I liked the colors as of that time, but learning more about colors, I wouldn't go in for that if I'm using it for photos. But if for videos, it's a hell of a camera. For what other, what other, what other, what other, what other brand? Well, so far I know I have in mind three brands, Nikon, Canon, and Sony, and I'm mostly a Canon fan. But if you want to buy me a Hasselblad or a Phase One camera, 
you know i'm always interested in getting them so i use i use the canon 5d mark 4 i did show you in my previous video and to this i have attached the change 470 l2 lens so that being said you're talking about lenses now when it comes to studio photography it all depends on what your brand is all about or what niche you're in i am a beauty photographer i am also a swimmer photographer i also do food aside i do weddings aside so to me i need to get some appropriate lenses for each and every job i'm doing i have to i have a me the canon um 24 to 70 like i mentioned it's a zoom lens i can zoom in from 24 to 70 which helps me with fashion which helps me with uh, portraits which also helps me with um, i think food sometimes and i think with swimwear too because it's quite efficient when i don't want to go in close to the model i also have the canon um, i think the sigma 85 1.4 arts which helps me with wedding portraits i have with me the canon 50 stm 1.8 which i will tell anyone who uses that never to underestimate that lens because it's really good with outdoor portraits if the lighting is well well lit and i think if the environment is well lit i also use the 50 sometimes in the studio if i want to take group pictures and i don't want that wide distortion from this 24 to 70. i have a 100 millimeter which i use for most of my beauty stuff so if you're seeing i think i'm i'm, I'm hoping i'll put up some of the videos for you to see but i have more videos on shooting with the 100 millimeter lens which i have put up pictures i think you've seen those back in 2020 so yeah the canon 5d mark 4 i coupled it with this 24 70 which of course is my go-to lens when it comes to swimwear and sometimes portraits so yeah this is what i use for a camera you can buy your own brand whatever you need whether nikon sony fuji but i'm a canon fan and i'm always going to use a canon so if you want if you really want to start um, shooting with canon cameras i'm going to suggest getting the canon 6d if you don't have enough funds but if you want to move into the mirrorless there's the rp you can start with the rp it comes with its lens and you can buy a converter to it so that you can use these ef lenses but if you have more money you can buy the rf lenses that's startup if you want to use canon cameras so I'm, I'm only going to talk about canon cameras today i'm not going to talk about the other cameras so startup 6d works canon um eos rp also works if you have more money you can get the 6d mark ii depending on whoever you are if you're a content creator or if you're a photographer or if you're a food content creator depending on what you want just get these stuff so i think i'm going to show you let me drop this i'm going to show you this is the canon 100 mm f 2.8 l lens red ring and this is the canon 50 stm which i used recently and i really love the images i got from this so yeah i don't have my x5 with me currently and i wish it was here to show you guys i think i i showed you in my previous video it was in my previous video so let me drop this let's talk about one last thing which are triggers when you buy your light which of course i'm sure you don't you're not going to use two lights one as a slave one as the main to trigger one you need triggers to trigger the flash i had a comment in my previous video the person said i didn't mention triggers i did it was just part of the lighting situation i was explaining so just so you know triggers i use the godox s2t trigger right this works well for me when it comes to how it's structured I know people use the Godox Pro triggers, which also works. You can also go in for the two wirelessly trigger where you put one on your camera and the other on the lights. But if you follow me and listen to the advice and you get any of the lights I mentioned earlier, I think these triggers might work. The XT, X1T, the X2T, the Pros. And these come with every brand of camera you're using with canon it comes you can see if i don't know if you can see c over there it comes with c if it's sony the right s if it's fuji there's f if it's an icon it's n and if you want to also figure out which um if it's supportive of high speed thing always look at look out for the horseshoes so that's it about triggers i'm going to recommend this because i use this a lot but if you want any other trigger you can get it what works for you what works best for you that's mostly it right so i hope i did explain 
well in depth to what you will need, the most important things you need to start up as a studio photographer or to start up a studio in your own house. The other ones, the studio space, the backdrops and all that, those are your own preference and it depends on the situation you're in. So I'm not really going to talk about that just so that um, when you have this and you don't have that, it looks different. But these ones you can afford, you can buy depending on what your budget is or depending on your pocket. All right, thank you for joining on today's video. Don't forget to subscribe. As usual, don't forget to give me a thumbs up, which is quite important because the algorithm here on YouTube, when you comment, when you subscribe, when you share, my video goes out to a lot of people who might also want to start up studio as you are here watching and learning a thing or two about getting these years in mind to start up a studio. So thank you once again for watching this video and don't forget to subscribe as usual and all the time. Thanks and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Thank you.